God this morning. Indeed, Jesus is the rock yes, of our salvation. Yes. Glory to his name. Blessing this morning. You know, I was just there thinking, and you may have heard me say this before. You know, sometimes we use language that we shouldn't use, you know, like caught between a rock and a hard place, for example. And I'm thinking, what if we would begin to say caught between Jesus and a hard place or a place of grace this morning? Hallelujah, because Jesus indeed is the rock of our salvation. And because of that, we can rejoice this morning. Glory to his name. Hallelujah, Father God. Oh, we bless you. I'm going to read this morning the entire Psalm 117 plus one verse from Psalm 118. Mm. You want to turn there? It's Psalm 117 and one verse from Psalm 118. And it reads, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. And I got one more verse. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Can we give him praise this morning? Can we thank him for his mercy this morning? Oh, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, glory. Glory to God. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from them all. We thank you, Lord God, for your delivering power this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that you're in the midst, God, making a way for your people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your promises are yea and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. worship you, Jesus. I worship you. Hallelujah.
I worship you. I worship you.
after a song like that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The spirit is alive. You know, before we come in, in the morning, I pray with the deacons and our associate ministers. And part of my prayer is always that, Lord, you just meet us here. You just have the service go your way. And that is truly what has happened today. Amen? Amen. 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 Today we're coming from Song 92. We're continuing on with our series about Thanksgiving. The 92nd Psalm. 92nd Psalm. It's a song for the Sabbath day. And I will read a few verses. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Amen. Today we're coming from the topic of it's good, it is good to give thanks. It is good to give thanks. Or as some might want to say, that we need to develop an attitude of gratitude. Amen? Yes, yes. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for blessing us once again. I just thank you, Lord, for anointing 
the choir, Lord, just to bless us, Lord, once again through the ministry of music, Father. They have already shared a message through music, Father. Now I just come to, to share what thus saith the Lord to, for these, your people. So be with me right now, Lord. Open the ears and hearts of those listening and watching, Lord, so they might take in what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. It is good to give thanks. You know, there's a lot of things in the world that is wrong. But then there are a lot of things in the world that is right. But I come here to tell you that the wrong stuff is temporary. Amen. But the good stuff is permanent. Amen. And that's what this song is all about. It's giving thanks regardless of your situation, regardless of the evil that surrounds you. And it talks about evil being temporary. And I, and I thought about this during the election the other night as we watched the counts, the, the votes be tabulated and, and things like that. My thought came to my mind, see, God don't like ugly, amen? God don't like ugly, but it's good to give thanks even in advance of not even knowing how God is going to fix it, but knowing that he will fix it one day. Do I have any witnesses that he's fixed it for them? Didn't know how it was going to happen, but it did happen. God, you did it. What, what did the young folks say? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? So as we look at this, why do we give thanks and why do we do this? And we see in the very first verse of Psalm 92, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Yes. We are to give thanks to the Lord, but it says it is good. And, and to answer the question of why it is good will come later on in this passage. And sing praises to your name, O Most High. God, we sing praises to your name because you are Lord. Lord, we sing praises to your name because you are the most high. Lord, we know that you are the one we go to during those times of need where you are also the one we go to during times of gratitude. Amen? It is appropriate and pleasant to give thanks to you for all that you have done for us. And, 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 and in the second verse, it says, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. See, 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 every night, we need to worship the Lord all day long. We might have a prescribed time that we spend dedicated time with the Lord, but we can praise the Lord all day long. Yeah, we need to declare his steadfast love for us in the morning. Why? Because guess what? He woke us up. Yes, <laughs> yes, he woke us up. Yes. Have you ever had one of those mornings when you wake up and the first thing you do is open your eyes to make sure that you can see? The next thing you do is to move those arms. As we get older, I start to understand that. There's some things that were hurt when you went to bed at night, but when you wake up in the morning, that's the first thing you want to check out to make sure it's still working. Rotate your ankles to make sure your feet are still there. Rotate and sit up in the bed. Some of us can jump right up out of the bed, but others have to sit there for a while and contemplate things because we are truly not fully awake yet. Do we have any morning people in the house today? But do we have some late night people in the house today? Those that don't like to get up in the morning, but are still thankful when they get up in the morning. I had a, a scare one time. I, I woke up and I thought it was morning because I'm the kind of person that once I go to sleep, I can sleep all night. But one time I, I woke up and opened my eyes. I couldn't see it. I realized I woke up too early and it was still dark outside. And I was thanking God. I said, thank you, Jesus. I thought I couldn't see, but it just wasn't that appointed time for the light to be exposed in my room. So, Lord, I, I thank you, your loving kindness in the morning, appreciating that as we 
wake up in the morning, that he's loved us enough to wake us up and carry us through another day. We might not be able to do the things that we used to do, but Lord, you are still allowing me to be here. Your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Thank you, Lord, for getting me through another day. We can look back and say, thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. But that loving kindness, that covenantal love he has with each and every one of us is what binds us with God. Amen. It's that love, that love that he sent his only son to die for us so we can be part of his kingdom and be cause of that love. We can be like Paul in Romans chapter 8 verse 38 where he says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights or deaths nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Your faithfulness, your loving kindness. Have you ever taken a moment just to look around in nature? Now, I'm a person that likes to walk among nature. I appreciate nature. But one thing I see about nature, nature is consistently moving on our behalf. Think about it. God puts leaves on the trees in the summer to give us shade. But then he takes those same leaves away in the fall to give us warmth. What a mighty God we serve. He cares enough about us to walk with us during our tough times. And let me rephrase that another way. He gives us the awareness to recognize that he is with us during our tough times. For he is with us all of the time. How do we praise the Lord? How do we thank the Lord for all that he has done for us? Look at verse 3. One way is through praise and worship. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, and on the harp, with harmonious sound. You know, music is instrumental to praise and worship. Voices are instrumental to praise and worship. In Exodus chapter 29, when the priests and the Levites were preparing for the morning and evening sacrifices, the singers led God's people in praise with song and music in worship. Folks, we are a praiseful people. We are a musical people. Just let somebody hit a beat sometime. And don't you see your, 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 your foot starts up. Dirt starts tapping. You can be in the mall and they can play that song from way back when. And you have those memories in your head and you start finding yourself moving, acting like nobody's there watching you. Amen. Hoping that the security camera is not pointing in your direction. Because there are times that we just have to let loose. But we in the people of God, we let loose in our own way. We can have our happy dance. We can have our joy of praise. Don't you know that we were the originators of the spirituals, those st- soul-stirring songs of deliverance yes. that were birthed from hope during tragic times. Our forefathers in the tobacco fields and the cotton fields, they, 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 they celebrated you, Lord. They praised you, Lord, in the peach fields, uh, the songs that were memorized and Passed from plantation to plantation, from bush harbor to bush yes. harbor, and other gathering places where the melodies would escape the ears of those who were overseeing our people. Songs that praise God, a God of deliverance and the faith to endure during hard times. I think back to my youth and some of the songs that I used to hear in church that I don't hear very much now. I got wings, you got wings. All God's children got wings. When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my wings. I'm going to fly all over God's heaven. With the songs like 
ain't nobody going to turn me around. Turn me around. Ain't nobody going to turn me around. I'm going to wait until my change comes. Songs like Still Away, Still Away to Jesus. Songs like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, Coming Forward to Carry Me Home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for the carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. If you get there before I do, coming for to carry me home. Tell all my friends, I'm coming to. Coming for to carry me home. Don't y'all remember those songs? And don't you remember the tears that used to stream down the faces of the saints as they were singing those songs, as they were sitting there just worshiping and praising. And I, and I came to realize at a certain age that they were happy tears because God had allowed them to still be here, that God had, had, had taken them from where they were to a better place, maybe not physically, but spiritually. We need to thank God. We need to continue to praise and worship him and share our expressions of worship with one another. And why are we so happy sometimes when we sing? Well, let's look at verse 4. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hand. You have made me glad through your work. You have made me glad that uh, you protected me uh, uh, through the troubles uh, that I had. I, I, I can imagine David saying, thank you, Lord, because you were the one that controlled the battles that, that I had to fight. I, I can imagine Joshua saying, thank you, Lord, because when I was coming up against Jericho, I might have had an outline for a battle plan in my mind, but you showed me the way to defeat the inhabitants of my promised land. Thank you, Lord. Your work, I will triumph in the works of your hands, meaning that as long as I stay in your will, I am more than a conqueror. As long as I don't try to do things on my own, I will survive. As long as I don't get in your way, I will thrive. I was watching the football game where the running back had the ball, and it looked like he was on the way to score, but he bumped into his own player and fell down. Sometimes your own players can be obstacles in your path to get to where God wants you to be. But as long as we remember that we are in his hands, yes. we will be victoriously. As long as we remember that we are his people, we realize that we never walk alone. Amen? Yes. The Lord is with us. And that's why the writer of this song is just, it's just glad because of what God had done for him. Look at verse 5. Oh, Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. How, how, how great are your works? You delivered us, Lord. You rescued us from bondage. You rescued us from danger. As a child, uh, my heroes were often found on the television. Amen? Anybody grow up with one of those black and white TVs and didn't know what color was and, and, and had the rabbit ears on top or an antenna outside and and you had to, every time you changed the channel, you had to change the direction of the rabbit ears so it would come in clear. But that was my childhood, changing rabbit ears so I could see my shows. And a lot of my shows that I liked were shows that had heroes on TV who rescued people who were in danger. There was the usual damsel in distress. And there was always a savior. There was always a hero. Whether it was Dudley Do-Right, he was rescuing Miss Nail 
from Snidely Whiplash. Yes, I still remember those days. Whether it was a man named Clark Kent that nobody figured out that he bore a star, strong resemblance to Superman who would somehow always find a telephone booth. I don't know what Superman today could do because we don't have telephone booths anymore. But he would know when Lois Lane was in trouble and rescue her. Batman and Robin had the bat phone in Commissioner Gordon's office that whenever there was something going on, whenever one of the evil ones, whether it was a Joker or a Riddler, was up to no good, they would see the bat signal and they would deploy down the pole and get in their car and shoot out and take care of it regardless of what was going on. That's what television shows are. They have the hero factor. But you know why the hero was so victorious? Because it was written in the script for them to be victorious. It was written in the script for nobody to ever figure out that Clark Kent looked like Superman. It was written in the script for Tarzan to be able to hear Jane cry wherever she was. It was written in the script that when the train came down the tracks and somebody figured out a nice woman must be tied to the tracks. Let me go rescue her. It was written in the script. My brothers and sisters, there's a script about us that has been written for a long time that we will be victorious. As a child, I looked for our heroes in the television, but as I grew older, I realized that my heroes are the one who raised me. Our heroes were the fathers who put on their clothes in the morning and went to work. It was the mothers who took care of their children. It was our heroes were all around us. They didn't have to put on a cape to be recognized as a hero. They just had to do their job quietly. Then as I grew older, I realized, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Another hero who is there for us at our lowest point. He is here for us, for our benefit. So therefore, we are conquerors. We have heroes and we are heroes to others. When we come to their aid, when we take time out of our day to check on somebody to make sure they are okay, when we take care of the needs of the least of these, we can be heroes. Heroes are not just limited to the television. Heroes are not just limited to a square tube with rabbit ears. Heroes are not just limited to the movie theaters, but there is a hero among us, one who has delivered us from the bondage of sin. Each and every one of us was like that damn so in distress tied up on a railroad track. (laughs) And you could hear the train (laughs) in the distance coming down the tracks. The way of the wicked is as darkness. But God But God, but God knew that we were on a path to destruction, a path to no good. But God came and interceded for us. But God, even before we were born, knew that we would have troubles in our life and need our Savior. Psalm 90 verse 14 says, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. He has satisfied us with his grace and his mercy. He has allowed us to thrive in spite of our surrounding conditions. But when he tells, the writer tells us what he's thankful for and why he's thankful, he has to pause here and talk about the enemy of the rebellious, of those who don't follow God are those that seem like they get the upper hand every now and then. Look at the sixth verse. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. The senseless man are are the brutish man. They lack values. They lack 
discernment. They live only to satisfy their own selfish appetites. The enemy of the Lord specializes in making life difficult for God's people. Have you ever had somebody in your life specialize in making life difficult for you? Well, 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 I got good news for you, amen? But before I go to the good news, I just want to relay something from Psalm 14, verse 1. Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. People who say that, they just don't understand the God we serve. They don't understand the God we serve. And verse 7 says, when the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. You see, the wicked don't understand that their wickedness will not last forever. But I, I, I saw something in this yesterday that I hadn't really fully grasped earlier. It says, when the wicked spring up like grass. Now, what's the nature of grass? We know in the springtime, the grass starts growing. And it seems like it grows real fast, especially after it rains. Seems like it was little grass yesterday, and it can rain all day today. And there's a lot of grass tomorrow. Spring it up, it looks good. We mow it, and it looks good. We take care of it, and it looks good. But you know what we know? That certain grasses will only last for a season. For we know once September and October comes, that grass will turn brown. That grass will no longer grow. It will lay dormant. It will, where you had to cut two times a week your grass in June, suddenly you can go three weeks or a month without cutting your grass. And, and that's what the writer is saying it says, that's how the fool is. That's how the enemy is. They're like grass. They will have their season where they will spring up and look good and appear victorious. But my brothers and sisters, that will not last always. That it may be destroyed forever. And then in verse 8, but you, Lord, are on high forevermore. So what he's contrasting the wicked to God. God is with us forever. And the wicked is like the grass that comes in its season and then fades away. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. You shall punish your enemies, O Lord, and it shall be scattered just like the leaves that shed their leaves in the fall and they are scattered. I just wonder why they're always scattered in my yard. <laughs> but they are scattered. They are scattered. They have no designated place to go, but they are scattered. So he's talking about why he thanks the Lord. He's talking about the nature of the wicked. And he even thanks the Lord because he knows that the wicked is not permanent. And he goes on to thank God for his provisions in verse 10. But my horn, you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. You have provided me strength. You have refreshed me. And this is the illustration of a wild ox, an ox, that if you rub its horns with oil, it will look much better. Have you ever gone to the state fair? And ever see, I go to the animal places. I like to see the different cows. I like to see the sheep. I like to see the pigs. I like to see <laughs> the animals. But you go there and they all look good. Even makes you think, well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I had a couple of those. <laughs> and then you come back to reality and recognize it took work to get them to where they are. And that's how 
the author is saying, I am refreshed. Yeah. Just like those prized animals who are paraded annually to the fair and they look good. They don't look that way always, but they look good. But Lord, that's how you have fresh, freshened me up. And in verse 11, my eye also has seen my desire on the enemies. My ears hear my desires on the wicked who rise up against me. Lord, you provide me victories. You provide me the opportunity to see your victories. The closer I am to you, the more I am aware of you fighting my battles. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Now, see, see, you see, the wicked is like grass, but the righteous are like the palm tree. The palm tree is a tree that is beautiful. Amen? How, how many of us have, have gone to southern Florida and seen the palm trees? How many of us have gone to certain streets in Los Angeles or Southern California and we just marvel. We just look up and say, look just like the postcards. We just, just look like the pictures we see on TV. Look at that palm tree. It's a reason because that is a beautiful tree. That is a beautiful tree, the palm tree. It is a, a tree that can provide nourishment through the oil it gives. It is a tree that was so prevalent in ancient Israel that they took the leaves off of them and lined the road as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rode into Jerusalem. Hosanna. What were they waving? Palm branches, the palm trees. We shall flourish like the palm tree. A palm tree lets you glaze upon it and admire its beauty. It she shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. A cedar was a hardy tree. A, a cedar was the tree that they used to build with. You know, when, when Nehemiah went back to Jerusalem to rebuild, the walls around Jerusalem. One of the things he got permission was to go through the forest and the fields and gather the material he needed. And you will see that the cedar tree was one of them. It is a hardy tree. It is a tree that is built to last. It is hard to break. It's sort of like our version of the oak tree. Amen? That is known for how strong it is. You know, for those of us who care about certain material, we will see things in the store that we might want to purchase. It might be a bookcase. It might be a desk. And we want to know what type of wood is in this. What we're really saying is this going to last. What kind of wood is this? There are soft woods and there are hard woods. But then there are woods that have something else inside of them that just have a, a thin veneer of wood that looks like wood on top of it. But if you ever scratch it, you will see the real material. But if you have cedar, you have something good. That's how the righteous are. The righteous are good. The righteous shall flourish. The righteous are beautiful. The righteous are a sight to behold. Why are they like that? Because in verse 13 it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of, the God, of our God. Those who are planted, planted in the house of the Lord. You know, when we plant stuff, we are intentional about planting where we want it to be planted. Amen? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? We, we just don't get a flower and say, or, or a bush and say, I don't care where that goes. I'll put it here. I'll put it here. No, no, no. We, we are intentional of where we want to plant things. And not only are we intentional, we prepare the soil to receive that which is planted. I watch Sister Sybil. She'll go out and, and get fertilizer and stuff and and get some more soil to mix it in and, and spend time to do all this and then plant the bush or plant 
the tree or plant whatever it is and plant it because it has a better chance to survive in good soil. Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Planting. What kind of soil do you think is in the house of God? <laughs> Where do you want to be planted? Where is your foundation? On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All on the ground. is sinking sand. Be planted where you get your strength. Be planted where you get your nourishment. Be planted in an environment that is conducive to your well-being and your spiritual uplift. Be planted. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, those who have their foundation in God shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those who are planted right can survive the winds of change. Those who are planted the right way, can survive the winds of every doctrine, as Ephesians tells us, that comes against us, and still be faithful. Those who are planted still flourish. I might look like I'm down, but guess what? I'm not out. Something else I used to watch, or my grandfather used to watch wrestling. You know that wrestling you see on TV? The old style wrestling, where they battle and they get somebody down in the headlock and you think they're out and their arms like this laid out. The referees start counting. One, two. Then they shift and get back up. It looks like they're out. But somehow they have the strength to hear the count and realize I still got a little bit more in me. That's how we are as a people. It might look like we're out. And I've actually told this to people before. You might think I'm out. But there is still another round coming and the bell has not rung yet. You might think I am done, especially the evil ones. You might think that what you have done will cause me to fail. But let me tell you, I choose to use you as a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. We serve that God. And the writer of this song knew that he served this God. This writer knew as the choir sung earlier that God is a way maker. That God is that miracle worker. That God is that promise keeper. That God is that light in the darkness. That is who you are. Even when I can't feel you. Even when I can't see you. That is who you are. Do I have some witnesses today that can tell me something about God being with them and allowing them to thrive under the worst conditions. Allow them to thrive in the wrong environment. Allow them to survive the evil that is around them. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Thank the Lord. Remember he is your rock. And that rock is your foundation. He is your rock. So stay close. Cling to him. His loving kindness in the morning. And his faithfulness at night. Thank him for who he is. It is always a good time to give thanks. So God bless you. A good time. 
to give.